Hey y'all, Scott here. Tambourine selling's in my blood, so welcome to the Bareen Bazaar, where tambourine selling's our specialty. Well, things are really heating up, which means there's only one thing to do to maintain our monopoly on the tambourine market. F***ing panic. With every purchase of a tambourine, you get a free copy of Wii Music. Wham! Damn! The Wii was home to many Wii games and Wii games. Yes, what better title to give your game than the name of the console followed by Word. I have a soft spot for the Wii series of games. They always used the console's unique controllers and capabilities in ways that turned many heads. Wii Sports, Wii Fit, Wii Party, even Wii Play all lit up sales charts and thus received follow-ups. Sure, they aren't the deepest games out there, but if you see a game that begins with the word Wii, chances are it'll deliver a fun night in with the family. Now replace the word night with eternity and family with the devil and you have a confusing sentence that can only mean one thing. You're playing Wii music! The only Wii series title to not get a sequel other than Wii Chess, which apparently us Americans hate this stuff, we never got it over here. Wii Music always had it a bit rough. From its initial unveil to now, it's generally always been seen as a joke, even by Nintendo fans. Concepts for the game could be seen as early as 2005 in the initial Wii Remote unveil trailer, back when the system still went by the codename Nintendo Revolution. Fast forward to E3 2006, where Shigeru Miyamoto starts the conference by conducting a virtual orchestra. This Maestro minigame was meant to be included in Wii Play, until the developers decided to craft an entire game all about music. And that brings us to the death of Nintendo. I'm sure you've all heard horror stories of Nintendo's E3 2008 press conference. It wasn't a good show, and that's being generous. And what better way to end an already bad show than with a fucking mental breakdown, holy sh**! Reggie was all like, we have one last thing. The lights dim, fog envelops the stage, and then this happens. Miyamoto comes out on stage and starts playing music with a Wii Remote poorly. He then describes how Wii Music is supposed to be a way for everybody to enjoy the world of music, regardless of musical experience, age, or gender. Following that up by playing some F-Zero music, that makes up for everything! Finally, Nintendo ends the conference by screaming to everybody, we're a company, guys, we swear. Yeah, Nintendo's E3 2008 showing was already pretty brutal, but just the fact they ended the show proudly demonstrating a sloppy run rendition of the Super Mario Bros. theme and Wii Music just sealed the deal right there. Zane doesn't look like a man, he looks like six me's playing music in a field. So people weren't too jazzed about Wii Music from the get-go, it just looked like a way to make songs play by swinging your arms around. That's not to say it didn't have a right to exist, 2008 was the height of the rhythm game craze with Guitar Hero and Rock Band. So it really didn't make sense for Nintendo to try their hand at the genre. It was also Nintendo composer Kazumi Totaka's first and only full-on directorial role on a game. This is a guy behind a ton of the music in Animal Crossing, Yoshi games, Luigi's Mansion, and he's also the creator of the Totaka's song Easter Egg, a little tune he throws into most of the games he's made. Weirdly enough, it doesn't seem like it's in Wii Music. Upon release, Wii Music was met with a lot of down-the-middle reviews, as in a lot of fives. Most of the people who reviewed the game just didn't see much value in it. But that was back then, and now is right now. I mean, it's been 10 years. Wii Music released on October 20th, 2008 in North America. Maybe we were all a bit too harsh on it at first. Or maybe- OH SHIT! I couldn't even finish that, of course it's terrible. I got this game for my birthday in 2009, and I thought it had potential to be cool. I always wanted to try to learn music, but after a few failed attempts, I maintain I never had a single musical intestine in me. So I guess I wanted to see if Wii Music could be my gateway into learning more about music. Fast forward to now, and I still have no clue what a f***ing trumpet is. It's fair to say Wii Music didn't grab me. I liked some aspects of it, but overall, it felt like it just lacked any point. Like, I'd pop it in, and within two minutes, I'd ask, All right, why am I doing this to myself? It has been a while, though, so let's boot it up and give it another go. We're greeted to what I think a hormone looks like, and his name is Sebastian Toot. He forces me to play the piano whether I like it or not, and all we have to do here is shake the Wii Remote nunchuck. Hey, hear that? I'm a penis! Next thing's next, we pop the nunchuck up and strum this guitar with the Wii Remote. Next up, the trumpet, and yeah, just mash the one and two buns with no nunchuck. Finally, uh, come on, why put the one instrument that doesn't use the nunchuck in the middle? Now I need to pop it back in for the violin. Actually, from what I can tell, you can play the majority, if not all the instruments, with just the Wii Remote itself, but to get that sweet, sweet immersion, you'll probably want to use the nunchuck for some of them. Doesn't matter though, because T-minus five minutes in, the immersion's already been broken. Who the hell doesn't blink while playing violin? Sebastian transitions into teaching us how to play a tune. Surprised at my size? Don't encourage him. And this right here is the gameplay of Wii Music. As Twinkle Twinkle Little Star is playing, I have to shake my controller as if I'm playing the music, but you don't have to do any specific motions or anything to play the correct notes. You fundamentally just have to shake the controller to the song, or not at all. Wii Music actually encourages players to do whatever the hell they want! Add notes to the song, it'll give it your own personal touch. 
Now you can definitely add notes to your song in Wii Music and make it sound somewhat elegant, but half the time the game decides to add random notes in there for me. I swing my Wii Remote and it counts for two notes played in succession. I can see why the music industry is hell to get into. Jam sessions are then demonstrated, where we just play a song with a band. And here I tried to do Twinkle Twinkle Justice, but man, I couldn't help myself. Don't worry if you didn't play it perfectly, because there's no one way to play a song. He's right. So now it's time to see what Wii Music rated that performance. Okay, we get to rate our own performances, <laughs> yeah! Now it's time to save a video of our jam session, and this is cute. Get to create our own album art and everything, that's great. This is one of the fun parts of Wii Music. And now we have all of the game at our disposal. Time to jam out with, you gotta be kidding me. We have to unlock the vast majority of songs in the game, and most are unlocked via doing more lessons with Dr. Toot. Yeah, we actually have to grind in Wii Music to unlock all the songs. The main problem is, once we actually unlock some songs, They pull a Chibi Robo zip lash on us. This song selection blows. You can't tell me Nintendo didn't have the funds at the time to license actual songs that actual people actually like. Instead, most of the songs are from the public domain. Nintendo did nab a few well-known licensed songs, September and Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go, just to name two, but they sound like garbage. Considering you only hear these songs played via Wii music instruments, they all sound like fifth grade marching band covers. That's not to say the instruments don't represent their real life counterparts well, I think the expansive instrument selection is one of the best elements of the game. Like look at all these things, they have all their own descriptions and they're relatively faithful to how the instruments are in real life. I think they really shine when you're just testing them all out, it definitely gives you some exposure to all different kinds of instruments. But when you actually attempt to play songs with these things, yeah it sounds gross. Just these midi, overly digital sounding, soulless renditions of some classic classic songs, and that's assuming you're playing them with appropriate instruments. You can play all the songs with all different kinds of instruments. Guitars, bagpipes, no integrity, anything. But that doesn't save the lame song selection. Even having some Nintendo tracks in here doesn't satiate my virginity. And for some godforsaken reason, there's a Wikipedia article solely dedicated to the songs in this game. It's only about 50 tracks, you could easily cram this into the regular Wii Music article, but this list has Turkey and the Straw in it. It deserves its own article. Now the main mode is the jam sessions, where you just play a song. Remember when when I said Wii Music encourages you to do whatever the hell you want? Well, in my opinion, it also actively discourages you from attempting to play the song correctly. You have to turn on the ability to see when you need to play your instrument by hitting the minus button. The fact that it's automatically disabled boggles my mind. Like, yeah, I get it. You want people to play the music their way, but what's the harm in showing them, hey, here's how you should play the notes. That's kind of what playing music in real life is like. You can always rate your performance and save a video, and that's it for the jam sessions. At least there's a selection of mini games to play. Me Maestro is actually a fun novelty. You just swing the Wii Remote around like you're conducting an orchestra, and it's a fun time. This was the mode I enjoyed the most. There's only five songs to play. Yeah, I'm not defending that. And when I screw around and pause, go fast and slow at odd intervals, I end up getting a better score than when I actually try. Handbell Harmony is like an actual rhythm game, where you along with a few others have to chime your bells when it's your color's time to shine. Yep, the rumors are true. This is an actual rhythm game, but like me maestro, it only has five songs. It's okay, just nothing special. And finally, there's Pitch Perfect, which is the most in-depth of the games, but it's just a bunch of music quizzes. Order from lowest to highest pitch. Who played the wrong note? Fix the song. It's not bad, but it goes on for eight levels. It's really drawn out, and it's just the same thing over and over again. Then we have Lessons, which just goes over everything that adds up to a song. You play the percussion, the harmony, the melody, everything, and play an entire song yourself. However, all these different style lessons just all feel the same to me. You just play through a portion of the song, and then another, and then another, and then another, and it's always twinkle twinkle little star! I mean, things might change up in later lessons, but in the hour and a half of lessons I sludge through, every single style lesson has you play twinkle twinkle little star and nothing else. Look at this, this is a fever dream! I'm playing the song with myself and what's her face? Babs? I don't know! If I ever saw a blimp with the Wii Music logo on it in real life, I'd piss myself. Wii Music was designed as a way for anybody to enjoy making music. You don't have to learn how to play an instrument, you can just shake the controller and make the notes play, mimicking the use of an instrument. It has good intentions, and the idea of being able to play music without learning how to play music is pretty decent. However, it always just felt like it lacked a real point. Like everything I do in the game just doesn't feel like it amounts to anything, it doesn't really bring me the joy of playing music, it just feels like I'm making noise at the end of the day, even if I'm making a deliberate attempt to try to follow the song. Wii Music never tried to be like Guitar Hero or Rock Band, those are actual games. 
while Wii Music is more so an application, a way to play music without learning an instrument. However, I feel like not having to learn a musical instrument takes a lot of the fun out of making music. It takes actual effort to play something correctly, which makes it much more satisfying. Just flailing your arms around doesn't bring you nearly the same amount of joy. It just feels like Wii Music is a bit confused as to who it's for and what it wants to be most of the time. Is it an educational tool? Maybe, but why are they like, don't read the notes, just play how you want? Is it a game? Not really, because there's really no risk of failure. Is it a music creation application? Well, you can't create your own songs. This is all just my opinion though. I've seen a decent amount of people say they were introduced to music production through this and they legitimately enjoyed the title. That's great that it introduced so many people to the medium. However, for me and many others, too many things just kept it from being all too great. The Wii Remote isn't accurate enough to detect a lot of the intricate movement of playing an instrument. Like look at this, I'm not trying to play multiple notes, I'm just trying to play the ones they're telling me to play. Because of that, I think for most people, Wii Music just ends up being a fest. It doesn't punish you for anything outside of the mini games. you score your own performances. And I think at the very least it should have been more strict than the lessons. You can cruise through those things without moving the controller at all, what's the point of lessons if they let you do that? It's definitely more fun in multiplayer, but at that point you'd probably rather just boot up something else. So yes, as a game, Wii Music is pretty bad. As an application, it's incredibly flawed, but it did its job for a handful of people. Regardless, it's still hard for me to let that song selection slide. Uh, who the hell looked at this thing and said, Oh, shit! Daydream Believer by the Monkeys!